All right, hi. This, I'm, I'm Robbie Musso, and I'm Josie Winrich. This is some kind of art panel. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably Transformers centric. You know, sort with of. the two of us, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And and we're we're here at uh, Little Rock Comic Con 2018, and this is the uh, Sunday panel. The double Saturday panel. <laughs> <laughs> right, the double Saturday. Yeah. So. So what's going on? You guys wanna 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 talk about some transformer talk or some art talk? Just let's repeat everything from last night. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should have we should have just had it rolling last night. Right. <laughs> we could have had a seven a a seven night. hour panel. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about Alex Ross some more. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's got a huge booth. And, and he's up an to uh, an air hockey yeah. match in the middle of the yeah. of the, of the, of the panel. Right, <laughs> dude. Since both you guys are in the Transformers, what do you like more, the, the old style or the since they started the movies and all of the different art styles they put together? Mm, I'm old school. I, gotta, yeah. uh, I think I think a lot of the fandom, you know, especially the older group, like you know, the yeah. two of us, we probably do prefer you know the original style more to the newer stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely the older. Um, I'm just at the edge of G1 because I was born in '84, the same year as you know Transformers started. So I'm I'm a little bit more of the the, the Beast Wars kid, the '90s kid. So, uh, but yeah, I, I grew up with the G1 comics and everything. So I'm, I'm more of the you know more of the old school sort of thing. But it's cool seeing the kids who grew up with like Armada. And, I can't even believe that anymore. Like I know, right? The people who watch Armada as kids are, are adults now. Like, that's, Mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you get a, a lot better hand-eye coordination these days, but not so much imagination. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's definitely evolved. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it started out. It's, I mean, when you think about it, it started out. It wasn't even Transformers when it started out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about Diaclone and Microman, it was just what that would become. Somebody's idea to get all these different lines and put them together and like, yeah, transform them. Yeah, breathe life into it. I guess a lot of that was Bob Davinsky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he wrote it up, but I mean, if you think about the the origin or, or the idea to put it all in motion, I mean, Hasbro. You know, I, I'm not sure who at Hasbro actually made the decision. To I'm like, sure that that information's out there, but yeah. Yeah. To like. Actually, I haven't gone to like the Japanese toy shows and seeing the diaclone toys and seeing the potential in them, but there was never any life. It's almost like it's almost like the the body was formed and then life was breathed into it. Yeah, it, it, it literally started a whole different mm -hmm. artistic yeah. style mm -hmm. when they came around because everything was the curves and the you know you didn't have anything with the short angles or the mechanics mm -hmm. or or anything else like that. Right, that's true. Because if you think, like before, uh, even Diaclone, you had like the Super Robot stuff. Like you had Mazinga Z, and you had like Ghetto Robo, and all those guys. They were really like rounded and cylindrical looking. All their legs were just straight like <laughs> cylinders. And yeah, yeah, you know, the only thing that was like square or whatever with, with like Transformers was Gundam. I mean, yeah, yeah, that RX seventy eight. Mm -hmm. Grandpa got them. Yeah, Grandpa got them. Yeah. <laughs> They kind of that's true. It kind of was like the first like. Well, I mean they are they are called like the real world like the real type, mechs, mm -hmm. right? right. Like, yeah. They're not the fantastical. Yeah. They're the more <laughs> military type. And then like when Diaclone came about, those kind of they still had that sort of like realistic type, like with the car robots. So, I mean they clearly were based on real world cars. It wasn't right. fantastical, um, but just. It's amazing. I mean, man, here we are, thirty plus years later, and like we're right. still talking about it and still working <laughs> on it. Yeah, it's really cool. But I'm, yeah, I'm um, happy about it. <laughs> if you know where to look on YouTube or wherever, there is footage of the diaclone display at whatever uh, Tokyo Toy Show mm -hmm. that Hasbro went to, and Kara went all out with that display. So I can just imagine like the Hasbro reps going over there and they see like, it, it was like this full diorama, all the cars going down the streets and everything. And I can just imagine that Hasbro guy going over there. I, oh my God, we need that. <laughs> yeah, like, what is this? <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Like, uh, 
because they even had like unfinished prototypes in there. Mm -hmm. Like it's like what was a wheel jack? Yeah, and Optimus. Like the Optimus right. looked like it was like almost paper craft looking, like it, right. or, or scratch built actually. Mm -hmm. Like it, you could tell like it was so early on in the, like the, the concept of it. And they they probably just put it out there to show like look like this is what's in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is what we we're going to have to offer. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, the story that um, who was that that came to that BotCon down in Orlando from Takara? Like, oh, was that Ono? I'm not sure. I actually didn't. I wasn't at that BotCon. It, it was one of the the higher ups of Takara who's been there for like 30 years. And he's like telling the story of how Convoy came to be. And he's mm -hmm. like, so we gave that to one of our new, our new people on the line, and he was more excited about his paycheck than about the toys. So he went out and he bought a sports car, and he was driving that around and. Convoy came up late in the production, you know, all, all, he missed all of the, the due dates. He was not driving his sports car. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he likes cars. Yeah, so I was yeah, so like, like, okay. Yeah. He got some inspiration out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, and then, you know. So what do you guys think of uh, Transformers post G1? You guys. Well, well, just one thing going back to G1. Uh, oh. We know, like I saw you had some Voltron art. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that whenever they, you know, here in the States that they wanted to order Voltron, they were actually, they, they kind of mixed up the names and they were like, we want this Voltron. And they were actually in, originally intending to have like the uh, Deltanius. vehicles. Deltanius. Yeah. And, and then they ended up sending them the lions. And they're like, well, that's not what we want. But then they watched some of it. And they're like, you know what? We like this. Let's <laughs> yeah. go with that. Yeah. You know, so it was actually, it happened by mistake. Now, they eventually went to the vehicles. And right. I guess it did okay. But the lions, uh, what, you know, signified Voltron and made oh, it sure. popular, you know. Uh, it was just kind of happened on a mistake. I wonder if there was any like Transformers that they did that with. Uh, I was kind of looking at. Uh, I heard someone say like originally like Megatron was going to be like uh, the Browning, mm -hmm. but they ended up doing the Walter P thirty eight, and they were like, you know what, let's go with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think with the Browning, I think that contributed a lot to the uh, like the animation model because if because uh, in the early car uh, toy commercials. Right. That like the early like when they would yeah. do the animated toy commercials, like there was a like some of the characters were drawn completely right. different. Like they showed Megatron. That was when they had Megatron with the black helmet. Right. And they had like his uh his arm cannon was weird too. Like wasn't it like mm -hmm. it did yeah, it did look like the scope. It just looked like a big like barrel. Like, that that's that's less uh, Browning inspiration, but there was also like three or four different prototypes for Megatron mm -hmm. before the micro change and in a lot of the micro change uh, catalogs, it was the prototypes mm -hmm. instead of the final toy. Okay. So yeah, there's a, there was actually a prototype Megatron with, with that black helmet and the different gun, and he actually had a waist. He didn't have that trigger cross. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> right. So he had an actual waist that transformed out of it, and I don't know why they didn't go with that because that, that was was that, it the same size class? Like, yeah, it was the same everything. It was just like an early prototype of the Megatron toy mm -hmm. where they had to you know they had to change everything for the final toy. Hmm. But yeah, that, that ended up in the microchange catalogs, and I guess that's probably where Hasbro picked it up, and they're like, okay, we want this toy, and then <laughs> they came up with that other yeah, microchange yeah. Megatron. Yeah, well. <laughs> Whoops. We all know that Beast Wars is the best, so <laughs> mm -hmm. that's that's where I'm at with like post G1. I really like Prime and stuff too, but you know, Beast Wars. I, you know, it's funny, like I, I tell this story all the time to you know fellow Transformers fans that I meet. You know, when Beast Wars came out, that was another one I wouldn't give it the time of day. Like I was like, <laughs> uh, my, my my brother, he's he's a few years younger than I am, but uh, when that came out, he's like, Robbie, there's this new Transformers show. It's really cool. It's got it's got uh, animals, Beast Wars, and I'm like, I'm like, what is this? Like, so I look at it, and uh, he's like, yeah, it's computer graphics. It's really cool. I, I look at it, I'm like they made Optimus Prime a gorilla, <laughs> like. I said, I said, you're not watching this. This is this is junk. Like this isn't uh, this isn't uh, Transformers. No. And uh, but it wasn't until um, you know it wasn't until Rhino put out the DVDs oh, no. like in the early 2000s. Oh, and at that time, I had like I had you know met some friends from the internet and a few of them were local, and they were like diehard G1 fans too. And they were like, no man, you you really have to give this a shot. Like no no like. No, I'm a, a hardcore G1 fan, and this is good. Like, I approve. You have to watch this. So I'm like, okay. So I, I ended up uh, buying 
the Rhino DVDs, like completely blind. Like I never, I always saw like clips from from the when it aired, mm-hmm. but I would never watch it because I'm like, this is junk. <laughs> just like turn it <laughs> off, you know. I'm so mad. So uh, so I'm like okay, like I trust my friend. And I'm like all right, I'm, all right. The only way I'll ever get to watch this again will be on this DVD, okay? So I bought the DVD set. And I started watching it, and like he's like, you, the first se- the first uh, season, it's a little hard to get through, but you got it. You got to stick with it. So I'm like, all right, and I got through it. I'm like I have to say, I know I know Josh is gonna be like, oh man, kick this guy off the stage right now. <laughs> but uh, but man. I, I, it won me over. Like honestly, like by by the time season two got started, like I was like, I'm sold. Like this is good. Like I, I, I never would have thought that I would have uh, felt that way. Like ten years prior or five years prior at that point, but. Uh, where that's how I got this buddy named Primal Sabbath. This is like, look, you need to really try Beast Wars. If you can just get past season one, I'm like, okay, right there, you're not really selling it to me, okay. <laughs> Well, well, to be fair, like it's the first half of season one that's a little, yeah, it you is. know. But as soon as they start getting into the world building, right, right, yeah, yeah. You think of things like the the all spark and the whole spark concept, like that's that's where they came. From. That's just amazing, man. Like the whole uh, stasis lock and all, like just they really developed the actual biology mm-hmm. of the transformers themselves, like right. not just or or actually the Cybertronian biology. Mm-hmm. Truthfully, I mean, yeah. what it contributed to the the lore. I think it was uh, unprecedented. You talk about uh, your your you know your younger brother watching it, and you were like, "He's supposed to be a truck." I had an older cousin, and you know he'd seen me playing with the toys or whatever. He goes, "What are those?" I was like, "Beast Wars." He goes, "Is that like Transformers?" I said, "I don't know." Like, even though it said it on the box, right. but yeah. Beast no, Wars was well, the big Beast logo. Wars was the main right. market. Yeah, yeah, like Transformers right. was the sub logo essentially. Um, he was just like, "Well, I grew up with something like that, except they were like cars and trucks and planes and stuff." And uh, then R.I.D. came out, and you know, all I thought he just told me Optimus was a red truck, so I'm I'm seeing a red fire truck. Mm-hmm. And then he comes over to visit some kind of holiday or whatever. I was like, hey, like this? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like and the whole time I'm just trying to you're like con- you're confused. I'm trying yeah. to please senpai, and it's just not <laughs> happening. And but uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny too. Uh, that, that's funny because. Um, my brother and I, we were always into Transformers. We, we were into G2, and then when that went out, we were like craving more Transformers. Uh, so we would pick up like random other convertible robot uh, lines. And when Beast Wars came out, uh, I remember my brother picked up a rock bubble. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows what that is. Man, uh, yeah. A Dinobot. Yeah, Series 1. Oh, yeah. Right on. And he buys that at, at, at Toys R Us, and he, he brings that home. And I'm, I'm just like looking at him like, why did he buy that? That's not a transformer. <laughs> and and then he, we we're sitting there, we're like, okay, well, so what is this thing? This this crazy knockoff that we just bought of this Dinobot. And we we're looking at it, we're like, okay, hey, man, it says Transformers. And we look at all the, the instructions, and everything. Like, There's our new Transformer. Yeah. <laughs> so we were we were in it at that point. Right? Well, that was uh, that whole. We thought it was a, we were buying. We, we thought that he bought a knockoff. And it's like, oh my god, <laughs> it, it's back. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of another thing too, though. Like when when it came out. At that time, Hasbro had just purchased Kenner, mm-hmm. and so they had moved Transformers to the Kenner division. Right. So mm-hmm. all the packaging was branded Kenner, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, we grew up with Kenner as well. I mean, I never, I, I, I that, you know, at that time, I was unaware that Hasbro and Kenner had become, or Hasbro had acquired Kenner at that point. Um, so I'm thinking like, okay, well, this is just a competing company. Like, like this this is the company that made Star Wars toys and, and masks. You know, this is they're, getting, they're getting back at Hasbro for so I'm like, I'm thinking to myself like, man, Hasbro. I, even like back then, I'm thinking like, man, Hasbro must have just sold Transformers. Like they must have just got rid of it. And this company, Kenner, doesn't know what to do with it. They don't like make little Star Wars figures. They don't know how to make Transformers. And and at that point, like I really did think like. I don't understand what's going on. Like, where's the little Hasbro logo on? Um, and then it wasn't until um, was it Transmetals when they started branding them? Yeah. It was, you know. As, uh, I know. I know my my Transmetal Primal still had Kenner in the instructions. Mm-hmm. It still had the Kenner logo. So I don't know if it was. It was. It was Transmetals and Transmetal too where they started playing the Hasbro logo. Okay. I, I think it was both logos for a while, and then yeah, they just yeah. 
Yeah, it was at that point I was like, wait. <laughs> Hasbro, Hasbro was like, hey, Kenner, thanks Some, for the success, but we're going to shut down. We'll take it back now. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, did Beast Wars or any of the uh, other, you know, Transformer, like, I guess, Transformer brands, you know, have any direct competition like G1 did? Because at G1, like, everyone was trying to knock them off, or, oh, like, yeah. Zybots yeah. and GoBots. I remember like, as a kid down the road he was like hey you want to come over and play transformers so i get my g1 transformers go to this kid's house and he's got these rocks and these, oh, yeah, yeah and transformers i'm like yeah he's got like gobot rock yeah. lords i'm like i just went back home you said we were playing transformers you're trying to i'm bringing over jets and lamborghinis and you're like hey check out these rocks that like roll around and stuff. You're, like, you're like i brought over the good stuff and this is all you this is all you bring to the table like Josh is like, I brought over pure Colombian cut, and you're giving me this <laughs> baking soda mix. Um, uh, Beast Wars, they, I know there was, um, there was some kind of line called Dinosaurs or something like that, or Dinosaurs. Yeah, Dinosaurs. That was a Bandai, I think. Yeah. They were, it was called Dino yeah. Zone in Japan, and it was Dinosaurs over here. It was, it was a cool line. It I was, think, I think they're all was, clear and with they had like, like the chrome, chrome dinosaur pieces, yeah. uh, skeletons and stuff. I bought a few of them. Um, most of them broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say I had, I had I had a few as well, but you're right, like they were loose and just that was but dude, that was a bad time for Bandai though. Mm -hmm. Back then, like um, even even their their model kits were bad. Hmm. But, yeah, but dinosaurs had that Gigano dragon. It was really cool. It was it was, it was like a, a dragon like this long. It was a Chinese type dragon, and then you just kept folding him up, folding him, folding him up, and eventually you got a robot that's standing there. And he, he had knees and, and hips and stuff. I mean, they weren't great, but it was, it was pretty cool engineering. It's just all of that clear plastic and all of those folded bits. Bro. Yeah. Not, <laughs> good. not good. Too many moving parts. Only a matter of time. Yeah. Now, Transformers has reinvented itself several times. Is there any part of that reinvention up to now that you would have said, eh, maybe not? Yeah, well, I mean, Beast Wars was the first one that was, made. That, was that was at that time. Well, G two had passed. They came out with Generation Two, and even G two, there were certain there were certain releases in G two. I was kind of like, because I was very like G one, like okay, when I was a kid, there were superheroes, and then there were Transformers. Like, and Transformers were just like. <laughs> Like that was my Superman. Like Optimus right. Prime, Superman was just like yeah, the guy in cape. Optimus Prime was my hero. Like he was like tops. Okay, so and Megatron was Megatron. So when G two came around, when I first saw the green tank, I again I was very I was always hard to convince. Like right off the bat, I was a skeptic. Like I was really? always a skeptic. Um, but I got over that. I'm like, okay, well they made they made him bigger. He's more intimidating. He's a tank now. He doesn't have to turn into a little gun. And have star screen shoot him, right? He can shoot himself and you know not worry about somebody else doing it. Um, but I, I, you know, I adapted to G two really quick. But Beast Wars was the first one for me that really just I was like I put my foot down. Back then I put my foot down. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Well, well, since like my brother and I, we 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 got to the point where we could buy our own toys late G two. Uh, before Beast Wars started, so we were always we always wanted more. Mm -hmm. So I think I still approach everything with that. Like, I, I'm not a skeptic. It's like, okay, what's the next thing that's coming out? Okay, that's cool. I want that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it's more like with the movie stuff. Like, I bought everything for the first movie. I bought like most of the stuff for the second movie, but I got tired of it after that. <laughs> so it's not like when new stuff comes out, I'm a skeptic and I'm like, no, I don't want that. I, I always have that fear where it's like something new comes out, like I want that. <laughs> And then it's, it's, like, it's usually like a year or two after that where it's like, okay, maybe this wasn't the best idea. <laughs> but, uh... Will anyone take this for five shots? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to put this in the tub, in the closet, and then I'm going to forget that I even own it. And when I go back to that tub, I'm going to wonder why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, I still... It, it, I mean, it's a Transformers, I want more of it, so... <laughs> That's usually how I approach everything. Yep. Other than Optimus Prime, who's your favorite Transformer? Hmm. Whose story do you like? Whose background do you like? Of course, yeah. Optimus and Megatron. They're, they're, you know, that 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 story is ingrained in everything. Right. You know, that constant clash. 
But it was there. Is there anyone they invented or brought in that you're like, oh, that's really cool? Well, I sort of like the genre of the kid-friendly character because every time I go back to who's my favorite Transformer, I always pick up Hot Rod, Cheetor, Speedbreaker. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at like, okay, there's something common between all these characters. There's always like that kid-friendly, friendly punk who has, you know, he 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 can become something more. Sometimes they don't, like Speedbreaker never did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's like that's like the genre of character that if I had to keep. Uh, a group of transformers like those guys would be the ones on the top of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the ones always the one that always would bond to like the human right. kid character. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I mean, even it, it's so so hard to choose. Like, but it's it's good that you said that because it, normally somebody would say, "Who is your favorite character?" And I'd be like, "It's so cliche, but it's Optimus Prime." Like, it's just <laughs> it's like I can't. You just can't. To, like ignore that like I know it's like it, it is so common like everybody's oh yeah Optimus Prime Optimus Prime but there's a reason for that I mean uh, but aside from him I probably would have to say I mean I like the design of so many of them I really like I love Sideswipe he's a Lamborghini it's like a <laughs> right. it's like a favorite car <laughs> you know um, I'm gonna buy one one day I know right <laughs> but it, but I have to say though w one of my favorites probably would have been like Mirage, truthfully, because I mean, he was as a kid, he was the first deluxe size Transformer that I got. Like I had like many bots to begin with, um, but Mirage, and then his character in the, in the cartoon was just—he was just cool. Like he was unique. And then at the end of like the More Than Meets the Eye series, like he had, you know, he vanished and then he reappeared in a ship and sabotage. <laughs> and, right. and I remember seeing like I was reading his like his text back as a kid, and it was always like he's a saboteur. Like he was like. That was his thing. Like he sat would would sabotage, you know, right. and it was so cool. Like when they were like escaping on the uh, the Nemesis, uh, or I don't know, was, was that was that the Nemesis? What did they call it? I don't, I don't think it was kind of jump name. Around. The Nem well, originally the Nemesis was the first one that crashed, right? And then they built another ship. So anyway, so they're they're on the new ship trying to escape back to Cybertron. Then all of a sudden, like this flash, like this box flashes, like inside, like the you know, the, the command center of the yeah. ship, and all of a sudden you see Mirage appear, and like he's the Autobot, and then all of a sudden Soundwave is like <laughs> Autobot Invader, and it's like, and then, and then dude, all of a sudden Mirage has sabotaged the whole yeah. thing. He's like, say hello to, uh, what did he say? I'll, oh no, he says, I'll say hello to Prime for you. Like, right. And then he jumps out with the parachute, and then he, then you see that ship is spiraling yeah. down, and then Mirage, and everybody's like, Mirage, save! Right. Yay! And you dude, could have waited for us. Yeah. What did I say? The ship was Yeah, full. the ship was full. <laughs> so, But it, that was like, Mirage was cool throughout that More Than Meets the Eye miniseries, mm -hmm. but his final payoff, like, at, at that, which is like, <laughs> I love that. You, I, you, I always... I was going to say, you had mentioned that uh, he, he was, uh, in, like, he wasn't there for, like, the rest of the series or whatever. Would have been a perfect way to just be like, well, maybe he forgot to turn his invisibility. Yeah, maybe right. he still is, right? <laughs> like he's just he he was he was there at the battles. So he just wasn't trying to get shot. Mm -hmm. And he has a point. Mirage actually, it was Autobot intelligence. And mm -hmm. They said saboteur because I don't think you know the term, you know, intelligence officer. Uh, you know, yeah, during that, the Cold War and all that. Yeah. So, that's yeah, true. that's that's yeah. what he was. He, he was. He was Autobot intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, he was a cool F1 car, too. So it's like, you know, he was like the only car that really wasn't a normal car. Right. Too. Street legal. Yeah. 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 Mirage was so cool, man. Like, I remember I remember being, like, as a Beast Wars kid, I was in, like, kindergarten, and we had this hour, and she would, like, okay, you go, guys go pick up a comic or whatever. She just mm -hmm. had a bunch of comics. And I remember reading, I could never, I could never tell you the issue, but it was, like, it was an issue that featured Mirage from the original Marvel Comics run, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like he was on some racetrack or something like that. I was like, God, I want that, <laughs> you know. And like even even though like I'd go to the store and see more beasts, and then I'm like, I want those. But like, I always like I always looked for a Mirage as a kid, not knowing that you know that that was about ten years prior. So, yeah, it would have been cool to get that G two one that that was like, pink um, and green. Yeah, and yeah. crazy and crazy colors. Yeah, what's weird is when we talk about the toys. Um, the toy that I always wanted as a kid, like every time I see the catalog or, or, or at a, it was always, you know, in the glass case at a toy show, um, was Prowl. Like, he's not one of my favorite characters or anything, but like I have like 
so much nostalgia because I would see, I could see the car of Prowl, but I could never own it. So uh, he's, I've got like this weird nostalgia for, especially for his car mode, because I would always see the car mode. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my god, that Prowl looks amazing. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I, I, I didn't know anything about the character or anything like that. It's just like I would always see the toy. I'm like, I want that toy. I can't have that toy. Yeah. <laughs> Those Z cars, they had the coolest robot modes. So yeah. Those were like, if you think of Autobot, you think of that silhouette, like right. that, like buck, <laughs> right, like. They, like no decorations, dude, but just like no yeah. styling, but dude, just the hood chest yeah, with the door that yeah, turned into the wings and like the shoulder uh, yeah. rockets and even their face was very Autobot. Well, logo. well the, yeah. the the Autobot logo was designed off of there. Yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, little, yeah. The little crest. Yeah, yeah. Out, off the prowl face. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they were cool, man. Yeah. So he's awesome. basically like the original Tarn, where Tarn's like the the <laughs> face, Prowl, and yeah. you know, and Blue Street. Yeah. They, they are and, Autobot and, he's a, and he is the in a, the Justice Department, right? So, Ooh. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, yeah. That's always weird. How he's a, would that make him the AJD? <laughs> Autobot Justice. Uh, okay. <laughs> But that was always weird how, how Powell is, is, and those guys became like, like the Autobot symbol and then Soundwave is the Decepticon symbol. And like, That's hey, true. Why isn't it like Optimus and Megatron? Why is it like there's these random other... No, I mean guys, Powell was like a lieutenant and Soundwave is sort of like the third in command. But maybe, so. maybe they won a raffle and they're like, okay, right. we're, <laughs> <your face." laughs> All right. All right, we're, we're picking straws. The but, beauty pageant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that gets around to what we're talking about. You know, Optimus and Megatron they're a story in and of themselves mm -hmm. with their history and the way they go back. And it's all the other side stories and the different things that, you know, that, that give it all the depth and the flavor. But the original, the original Transformers movie, and correct me if I'm wrong, gave us a look at what they were as Cybertronians. As Cybertronians. Mm -hmm. You know, the cartoons and everything always gave us Autobots or Decepticons. Right. But the movie actually showed what they were, what they truly were mm -hmm. in their abilities to right. transform. Did that live up to expectations or did you guys, you know, was, was their concept what you had seen in your mind? Or did it ever even occur to you that, hey, they were something other than, a, than an Autobot or a Decepticon? Right. Hmm. Well, uh, it started with the very first episode, it gave us a look at uh, Laser Beak and Soundwave and Bumblebee and Wheeljack as you know their Cybertronian vehicles, and then uh, War Dawn had uh, uh, Orion Pax, Optimus Prime before it came out as Prime. So, although I did see those after the movie, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's season so, three. So. Uh, so, I don't know. I, like I said, I always approach it to everything with like, I want more, so <laughs> I, I, I was never skeptical about, about <laughs> seeing the Cybertron in I was always just wanted, like, okay, I can make toys of those now. <laughs> well, the, the 86 movie, um, and one thing, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, this is like kind of part of it too, but uh, it starts off with like the, uh, what is it, the Lithonians? Yeah, the Lithonians. You know, like Kranix, like they're the first ones to get attacked by Unicron, right. and they're like, they're they're obviously like a robotic life forms, mm -hmm. but they don't, they don't show any indication that they turn into anything. Until right? so you get to the Marvel comics where they did that. Well, right. <laughs> but, but they show them, they're like, you know, oh, you know, it's Unicron, escape, and then they're all running, but they, and so you kind of want, at first you think that they could be on Cybertron, mm -hmm. uh, but it does show like these are our other robotic life forms. So maybe, you know, perhaps this, this is what the Transformers could have looked like like before adapting the whole ability to transform. I think in different fictions they explain like they weren't originally designed to transform, right? Is that something that they eventually yeah, adapted? Yeah, uh, when the war came around, like the Decepticons did it to be sneaky and then the Autobots did it to, to counter, mm -hmm. uh, to hide from the Decepticons who were attacking them, so. Okay, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely cool how that all developed. Evil bullies and heroic cowards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And where there's just a lot of culture, you know, you were talking about the Beast Wars and stuff that really got into the whole culture of the idea that they brought across, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, and it, it explored, you know, different things about just how they function, you know, how, how they and how they die. Like you, and that was the other thing too. Like with Beast Wars, the way it introduced things like the spark. Mm -hmm. um, to me, retroactively, it, it did explain 
with you know in a in a fantasy type logic it explained why optimus prime died but after, but ultra magnus got blown to bits and then they put him back together and mm -hmm. he was still alive and it's like as a kid you're like why can't you just put optimus prime back together make him <laughs> well it's like well his spark got extinguished like right. it's like once that's gone there's no reigniting it mm -hmm. so like you could make the argument well magnus got blown to bits but his spark chamber was still like lit right you know, and if you put them back together, and basically, it's like if your computer is still functioning, and you disconnect your the hard drive, it doesn't mean that if you plug it back together, it's not going to work again. Mm -hmm. But if your hard drive really does burn up, and you you could plug the thing back in a million times, but it's not coming back. Unless the toy sales start to decline, and right. the <laughs> <stuff, laughs> next exactly. season we need to bring them back. Right, right. Two right. More if something happens in a MacGuffin device, yeah. uh, is introduced. Well, they even did that in Beast Wars with Dinobot, like like Dinobot. That's it. Yeah. Until about four episodes later. Uh, <laughs> well, Dinobot 2, is, is that what it was? Yeah. 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 Well, 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 this sort of uh, you know, foreshadowed that where Megatron already made a clone of Dinobot. So it's like, okay, it's kind of possible to, to do something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still a little mm -hmm. bit of a cheat. I mean, Code of a Hero is such an impact episode. It, it was a little bit of a cheat to bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the, uh, one of the things that I noticed that was different about Transformers, like in DC, like Darkseid's the bad guy, or in Marvel, Thanos, you know, or whoever, you have your bad guys and good guys, and it's very distinctive mm -hmm. uh, and easy to follow as a kid, but in Transformers, yeah, on Cybertron, maybe, you know, the Decepticons were the bad guys, and when they came to Earth, then it became where Megatron was like, look, we need to get energy, here this right. planet is, where we get this energy and bring life back to Cybertron, and so it ended up being Megatron just wants to save his planet, right. which I would think, like, us Earthlings, we found another planet, to, they were like, hey, here's all yeah. the stuff to kickstart Earth again and make Earth better, but we found out that there was some intelligent life there, I mean... Maybe. Will we will we not may probably do the same or? What would it be? I think like, that's a Star Trek episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds. Like, but I mean, I, I guess the, the it was thing, never like a clear line that Decepticons really bad right. and Autobots good. It's like I can see why they're doing this, and I can see why the Autobots are doing this. Right. Yeah. Well, but if you think about Optimus's motto, you know, freedom is the right of all sentient beings. So it's we like, should be sapient beings. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I mean, the thing is. You know, if, if you don't like save your planet at the expense of destroying someone else, I guess basically. I guess that's the theme. Like, you know, Optimus Prime, his idea would be like, well, let's save our planet, but let's do it without harming others, basically. Right. And I think, and that's just the difference. Like Megatron, just like you know, like can't all take. It's like, it's basically like pillage, right? Like right. you basically just go in and you know take at all costs and don't right. worry about the like yeah. the. The wake of destruction that you leave. Everything is fodder. Yeah. To kind of skip forward to the um, 